occult philosophy or magic. Henry Cornelius Agrippa. Book 1. Natural Magic. Which includes the early life of Agrippa, his 74 chapters on natural magic, new notes, illustrations, index, and other original and selected material. Cornelius Argippa to the reader. I do not doubt, but the title of our book of occult philosophy or the magic may by the rarity of it allure many to read it, amongst which some of a disordered judgment and some that are perverse will come to hear what I can say who, by the rash ignorance, may take the name of magic in the worst sense, and through scarce having seen the title, cry out that I teach forbidden arts, sow the seed of heresies, offend the pious, and scandalize excellent wits, that I am a sorcerer, and superstitions, and devilish, who indeed am a magician, to whom I answer that a magician doth not amongst learned men signify a sorcerer of one that is superstitious or devilish, but a wise man, a priest, a prophet, and that the Sibius were magicianesses and therefore prophesied most clearly of Christ and that magicians are wise men by the wonderful secrets of the world, knew Christ, the author of the world to be born and came first of all to worship him, and that the name of magic was received by philosophers, commended by divines, and is not accepted to the gospel. Unacceptable. And magicians, as wise men, by the wonderful secrets of the world, knew Christ, the author of the world, to be born, and came first of all to worship him, and that the name of magic was received by philosophers, commended by divines, and is not unacceptable to the gospel. I believe that supercilious censors will object against the syllabies holy magicians and the gospel itself sooner than receive the name of magic into favor. So conscientious are they that neither Apollo nor all the muses nor an angel from heaven can redeem me from their curse, whom therefore I advise that they read not our writings nor understand them nor remember them, for they are pernicious and full of poison. The gate of Archeon is in the book. It speaks stones. Let them take heed that it beat not out their brains. But you that have come without prejudice to read it, if you have so much discretion of produce, prudence as bees have in gathering honey, read securely and believe that you shall receive no little profit and much pleasure but if you shall find any things that may not please you let them alone and make no use of them for i do not approve of them but declare them to you but do not refuse other things for they take look into the books of physicians do together with antidotes and medicines read also of poisons i confess that magic teacheth many superfluous things and curious prodigies for ostent ostentation leave them as empty things yet be not ignorant of their causes for those things which are for the profit of men for the turning away of evil events for the destroying of sorceries for the curing of diseases for the exterminating of phantasms for the preservation of life, honor, or fortune, 
may be done without offense to God or injury to religion because they are as profitable so necessary. I, but I have a, admonished you that I have writ many things rather narratively than affirmatively. For so it seemed needful that we should pass over few things following the judgment of Platonists and other Gentile philosophers when they did suggest an argument of writing to our purpose. Perhaps if any error have been committed or anything hath been spoken more freely, pardon my youth, for I wrote this being scarce a young man, that I may excuse myself, say that whilst I was a child, I spake as a child, and I understood as a child, but being become a man, I retract to those things which I did being a boy, and in my book, of the vanity and unclear uncertainty of sciences I did, for the most part, retract this book. But here, happily, you may blame me again, saying, Behold, thou, being a youth, didst right, and now, being old, hast retracted it. What therefore hast thou set forth? I confessed, whilst I was very young, I set upon a writing of these books, but hoping that I should seem, I should set them forth with corrections and enlargements. And for that cause I gave them to Trimetheus, a Neolopolitan abbot, formerly a Spanhelensian, a man very industrious after secret things. But it happened afterwards that the book, being intercepted before I finished it, it was carried into imperfection and impolished, and it did fly aboard to Italy, in France, in Germany, through many hands of men, and some men, rather more impatiently or imprudently, I know not, would have put it thus imperfect to the press, with which mischief I, being affected, determined to set it forth myself, thinking that there might be less danger in these books, came out of my hands with some amendments that then to come forth torn and in fragments out of the other men's hands. Moreover, I thought it no crime if I should not suffer the testimony of my youth to perish. Also, we added some chapters and inserted many things which did seem unfit to pass by, with the curious reader shall be able to understand by the inequality of the very phase, phrase for we were unwilling to begin the work anew and to unravel all that we had done, but to correct it and put some flourish upon it. Wherefore, I pray thee, curious reader, weigh not these things according to the present time of setting them forth, but pardon my curious youth if thou find anything in them that may displease thee. When Argipo wrote his book, occult philosophy, he sent it to his friend Trithemius, an abbot of Wizardsburg, Wurzburg, with the ensuing letter. Trimetheus detained the messenger until he had read the, trans the manuscript and then answered Archippus' letter with such sound advice as mystics would do well to follow for all time to come. Trithemius is known as a mystic author and scholar. Agrippa to Trithemius When I was of late, most revered father, for a while conversant with you in your monastery of Herbipolis, we conferred together of divers things concerning chemistry, magic, and Kabbalah, and of those, and of other things, which as yet lie hid in secret sciences and arts. And then, there was one great question amongst the rest. Why magic, whereas it was accounted by all ancient philosophers to be the chiefest science, and by the ancient wise men and priests was always held in great veneration. 
came at last after the beginning of the Catholic Church to be always odious and suspect by the Holy Fathers and then exploded by divines and condemned by sacred canons and moreover by all laws and ordinances forbidden now the cause as I conceive is no other than this this because by a certain fatal deprivation of all times and men many false philosophers crept in and these under the name of magicians heaping together through various sorts of errors and factions of false religions many cursed superstitions and dangerous rites and many wicked sacrileges even to the perfection of nature and the same set forth in many wicked and unlawful books to which they have by sealth prefixed and most honest name and title of magic hoping by this sacred title to gain credit to their cursed and disdainable fooleries hence it is that this name of magic formerly so honorable is now become more odious to good and honest men and accounted a capital crime if anyone dare profess him to be a magician either in doctrine or works unless happily some certain old dotting woman dwelling in the country would be believed to be skillful and have divine power that she can throw down the heaven lift up the earth harden fountains wash away mountains raise up ghosts cast down the gods extinguish the stars illuminate hell or as Vigril sings, she'll promise by her charms to cast great cares or ease the minds of men and make the stars for go back to and rivers to stand still and raise the nighty we go to even at her will to make the earth so grown and trees to fall from the mountains hence those things which lucan relates of thessala the magicianess and and homer of the omnipotency of circ circ whereof many others i confess are as well of a fallacious opinion as a superstition superstitious diligence and perniculous labor for when they cannot come under a wicked art yet they presume they may be able to cloak themselves under that venerable title of magic these things being so i wondered much and was not less indigent that as yet there had been no man who had either vindicated this sublime and sacred discipline from the charge of impiety or had developed it purely and sincerely to us what i have seen of our modern writers roger bacon robert of york ben Wiersman, peter Pontus, albertus magnus and tichinus arnotus de vida nova and many other writers are an obscure name when they promise to treat magic do nothing but relate irrational tales and superstitions unworthy of honest men hence my spirit was moved and by reason partly of admiration and partly of indignation i was willing to play the philosopher suggesting that i should not that i should do no discommendable work seeing i have been always from my youth a curious an undaunted searcher for wonderful effects and operations full of mysteries i should recover that ancient magic the discipline of all wise men from the errors of impiety purify and adore it with its proper luster and 
vindicate it from the injuries of communicators. Calumniators. Which thing, though, I long deliberated, of it in my mind, I never durst undertake. But after some confidence betwixt us of these things, at Herbolic Polis, your transcending knowledge and learning, and your ardent at horrid nation, put courage and boldness into me. There selecting the opinions of philosophers of known credit, and purging the introduction of the wicked. Who, dissemblingly and with a counterfeit knowledge, did teach that tradition of magicians must be learned from very reportable books of darkness or from institutions of wonderful operations, and removing all wickedness, all darkness, I have at last composed three compendious books of magic, entitled them of occult philosophy. Being a title less offensive, which books I submit, you excelling in the knowledge of these things, to your correction and sincere that if I have wrote anything which may tend either to be contumely of nature, offending God, or injury of religion, you may condemn the error. But if the scandal of impiety be dissolved and purged, you may defend the traditions of truth, and that you would do so with these books and magic itself that nothing may be concealed which may be profitable and nothing approved of which cannot but do hurt. By which means these three books having passed your examination with appropriation, approbation may at length be thought worthy to come forth with good success in public and may not be afraid to come under the censor of posterity. Farewell and pardon these my bold undertakings. Try Themius to our Agrippa. Your work, most renowned Agrippa, entitled Of Occult Philosophy, which you have sent by this bearer to me, has been examined. With how much pleasure I received it, no mortal tongue can express, nor the pen of any right. I wondered at your more than vulgar learning, that you, being so young, should permeate into these secrets, and as have been hid from most learned men, and not only clearly and truly, but also properly and elegantly set them forth. Hence first I give you thanks for your good will to me, and if I shall ever be able, I shall before you thanks to the utmost of my power for your work which no learned man can sufficiently commend, I approve of. Now that you may proceed toward higher things as you have begun, and not suffer such excellent parts of wit to be idle, I do, with as much earnestness as I can, advise entry and in beseech you that you would exercise yourself in laboring after better things and demonstrate the light of true wisdom to the ignorant, according as you yourself are divinely enlightened. Neither let the consideration of idle vain fellows withdraw you from your purpose. I say to them of whom it is said, The wearied ox treads hard, whereas no man to the judgment of the wise can be truly learned who is sworn to the rudiments of one only faculty. But you have been God gifted with a large and sublime wit, and it is not that you should imitate oxen, but rather birds, 
neither think it sufficient that you study about p particulars but bend your mind confidently to universals for by so much the more learned any one is thought by how much fewer things he is ignorant of moreover your wit is fully apt to all things and to be rationally employed not in a few or low things but many and sublimer yet this one rule i advise you to observe that you communicate vulgar secrets to vulgar friends but higher in secret to higher in secret friends only give hay to an oxen sugar to a parrot only understand my meaning lest you be trod under the oxen's feet as oftentimes it falls out farewell my happy friends and if it lie in my power to serve you command me and according to your pleasure it shall without delay be done also let our friendship increase daily write often to me and send me some of your labors i earnestly pray you again farewell From our monastery of Peopolis on the 8th day of April, 80, MDX. In January 1531, Argapa wrote from Mechelen to Hermann of Weld, Archbishop of Kolleg, to whom he dedicated his occult philosophy. In this letter he says, Behold, amongst such things as were closely laid up, the books of occult philosophy or of magic, a new work of most ancient and abstruse learning, a doctrine of antiquity by none, I dare say, hitherto attempted to be restored. I shall be devotely yours if these studies of my youth shall by the author authority of your greatness come into knowledge seeing many things in them seems to me being older as most profitable and most necessary to be known you have therefore the work not only of my youth but of my present age having added many things